After months of speculation, the rumors have in fact been confirmed. The PS5 Pro is real. It's releasing this holiday season. Later this month, you can pre-order it if you can scratch together the sizable ransom. I mean, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing, okay? Early on Tuesday, there was this big tech presentation where Mark Cerny, the architect behind so many PlayStation consoles, came out and gave a very light on detail, but very emotion feels, vibes-based presentation as to why the PS5 Pro is the most visually impressive way to play games. Very, very, very light on details. And when I heard that there was some speculation that the PS5, which... I guess, and you take a look at the sales and it doesn't really compute with the way that people talk about gaming nowadays. Like, it's selling very well, it's selling well enough, mostly because I think if I'm to just simply speculate because Microsoft has fallen off so hard in regards to X or yeah, the Xbox platform, I'm not really definitively saying whether the X or the S is the preferred way that they want you to experience their games, really moving away from exclusivity, the reason that you buy a console, even though I don't really agree with exclusivity in this time, this day and age of gaming, which is another reason why, you know, when the PS4 Pro was announced, I didn't pick it up. I still have my launch day. PS4, it worked fine until, yeah, and I eventually had to break down and get a second-hand PS5. Which I think is a launch PS5? Based on serial numbers and a bunch of other stuff, that's basically what I could gleam. But if it wasn't for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming out this year, I never would have picked one up. I wouldn't have been interested in this PS5 Pro at all whatsoever. Because I know my PC is going to do everything so much better. Because even when... Even when the original PS5 was released and we finally got some insight into the specs, everybody was looking at that going, that's kind of an, it's just an overpriced PC that you can do fewer things on and it's going to run your games at a suboptimal level to PC. And this was even back in 2020. But the reason that people would plug their nose, put down some money, and if you could actually secure a PS5 at the time, you would do that because, well, there was always going to be the promise of Sony exclusive games. And they had, at the beginning of this console cycle, quite an illustrious catalog. Like, Naughty Dog. Even though recently, well, in 2020 times, they had shot themselves in the foot with The Last of Us Part Two. Which, guys, don't worry, it's gonna run so great on PS5 Pro. I was like, oh my god, you take a look at what's going on over there. Oh, it's gonna run at 60 FPS. I'm so glad that a console, a brand new console, is gonna be able to run a game that was in development since, what, the mid-2010s, and it can finally look decent and run at a half, and a, at least at the standard 60 FPS frame rate. I'm so glad you can plop down so much money for an experience that PC guys have been able to run for a very long time. But yeah, you had, what, God of War? The promise of a new God of War coming out, okay. Uncharted, even though we still haven't had a proper release there. Um, What was it? Wasn't Horizon 2? Horizon 2 was a launch title. Ratchet and Clank, that was definitely a launch title, but all of those games that I've mentioned before, they're all on PC now. Like, there's realistically, there's realistically no reason to pick up a PlayStation 5. You're simply a video gamer. If you have the capacity, if you have the ability to pick up a PC, what's the point in buying a PlayStation? It used to be only games that you can play on the console, and thanks to a lot of companies realizing the foibles of exclusivity deals on the little plastic bricks, you can go ahead and play the game wherever you want. If you want a simple plug-and-play experience where you just, you know, Buy the game, put a controller in your hands, and away you go. That used to be the selling point when it came to consoles. But ever since the advent of so much online interco interconnectivity, you have day one patches, you have a digital releases, you have to worry about storage space, and then that ended up ampering the console experience. And that's why a lot of people went over, and especially if they were third party or more indie focused when it came to their you know video game consumption, yeah, everybody started to move over, probably in on and around the time of the seventh gen or i guess that would be the eighth generation at the conclusion of the seventh moving into the eighth the ps4 xbox one era when you know microsoft was threatening with the xbox one where it was going to always be online and everybody was just looking at it and going then what's the point why don't i just go to pc and so many people did i know i made the jump in late 2013 early 20 or late 2013 i think i think that's when i bought my first gaming pc and ever since then yeah where i do a majority of my gaming 
because if they were going to be moving the consoles, Sony, Microsoft, not so much Nintendo, Nintendo's out there doing their own thing. And we're talking about the big two right there. They're going to be focusing so much online. Why not just go to the people that specialize in that stuff? Why not just hop on Steam? And if you're playing a lot of games, you know, the platform is affording you so many discounts, so many options. Like it just makes sense as opposed to the one controlled store in a digital sense for Microsoft and for PlayStation. Or there, yeah, you could actually have the conversation of price fixing when it comes to games, which now we're going to be experiencing because if you've been taking a look at the picture and obviously we're going to be going into the, well, the, the specs that we do have because we don't have any technical specs. There is no out of the box. There's no disk drive on the PS5 Pro. What? That's absolutely absurd. I kind of understand it if you're just looking for this is going to be the most technically proficient, the most east box that you're ever going to get in the form of a console to this point in time. There is a data transfer lag when it comes from physical media going through the processing power of the console and then putting it up on your screen. There is a little bit of a bottleneck created there given what they're doing on consoles and in gaming right now. That's realistically not a problem. It's not, uh, it's not a big enough hampering where you need to start specifically focusing on putting everything on an SSD. And that was the big selling feature of the PS5, right? Oh, the, thanks to the power of this old technology that PC gamers have been using to great effect for the better part of a half a decade. Oh, yeah, the, the games are going to look so much better. They're going to run so much cl uh, crisper. There's going to be fewer loading screens. It's like that all boils down, if you know the technical side of things, to proper RAM and CPU cooperation the textures and the graphical fidelity well that's obviously done by the gpu but when it comes to the rapidity of loading polygons of framework yeah you need a cpu to process it you need adequate ram in order to quickly display it upon screen and that's why everybody was you know, a little bit taken aback by how bare bones the original ps5 is and now we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer because we don't really have any numbers we don't have any comparisons to make for the ps5 pro because when you just take a look at this press release it's just oh yeah no uh, uh september 26th feel free to pre-order something that you have very little information to go on uh, outside of saying that yeah the ps5 pro we are upgrading the gpu that has 65 percent more compute units what the hell does that mean and 28 percent faster memory that is inconsequential in the grand scheme of things okay overall this enables up to 45 percent faster rendering for gameplay making the experience much smoother what are your comparisons that you're making here are you talking about a big open world like rebirth which we've seen okay it was a part of the tech demo that was down there and damn it you know the game looks good it looks quite good running on the ps5 pro you know the flowers don't look like they're made out of cardboard and that's all nice and stuff but the way that i seen it and it's like cool i appreciate the early pc port update because that's the way that that's that's how that screams right there it's like what are you comparing you're telling us that it's faster than this other thing what are the things that you're comparing advanced ray tracing Great. Again, that's technology that PC has been working with for the better part of a decade, and that was supposed to be a big selling feature of the PS5, but nothing has really taken advantage of it. And then, yeah, AI-driven upscaling. Okay, cool. Yeah, so instead of making native 4K 60 FPS games, yeah, we can just upscale them. So you're selling us. You're selling us on what the equivalent would be. Is this high-powered Blu-ray player, but it doesn't even have a disk drive. Just follow me for a second. You're buying uh, the top-of-the-line 4K Blu-ray player. You're selling us on this idea that your dvds will look better not exactly a winning strategy especially when you're expected to plop down seven hundred dollars bro you know what this screams if you've been in the game long enough you remember when they announced the ps3 and the ps3 was gonna run 599 and all of that momentum that sony had garnered up during the ps2 era immediately went right off that e3 stage what are we doing no disk drive no vertical stand by the way you're lucky you're even getting a controller at this point in time but you, if you're lucky if you're fortunate enough you too can part with 700 dollars us 700 dollars us by the way oh but guys guys we're gonna have ps5 but pro enhanced with so many of your favorite titles such as 
Alan Wake 2. Nobody's playing that shit, okay? Assassin's Creed Shadow, you make me laugh. Demon Souls. Okay, I think that that's still actually exclusive to Sony. Okay, fine. Dragon's Dogma 2, third party. Okay, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Yeah, right now, but there's also rumors in the way that stupid-ass Jeff Keighley, who's also doing some major boot licking, or boot licking for Sony right now, has been tweeting that, yeah... You know, the PC port, or at least some uh, additional news in regards to that is going to be coming out real soon. And then there's also this rumor that there might be the PC port uh, late November. I haven't seen that confirmed anywhere else, but I've seen a number, uh, I've seen a date thrown out there. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, here are, here are inflation adjusted prices for mainline PlayStation consoles since launch. You know, Jeff Keighley, the founder of the Game Awards, the former Dorito Pope over there at Game Trailer, supposed to be so objective, but continues to lick the boot of Sony. Oh, when the PS1 launched in 1995, it was the equivalent. I, what did it launch at? Two ninety nine. Six hundred eleven dollars. So that I think that's probably a little bit more damning than when you look at how bad inflation has got. Because here we are, twenty nine years later, and inflation has got it to a point where your nineteen ninety five money was half as valuable as it is today. Yeah, the PS two, which came in at the correct price point in two thousand. Yeah, if you were to buy it today, equiv yeah, equivalently. Five hundred of forty-six dollars, and the PS3 still the most expensive console that they've ever released. And it took them how long to reclaim their crown? Yeah, until the tail end of the seventh generation. And the PS4, yeah, they made the proper change on that one, came in a hundred dollars cheaper than the Xbox One, and doomed Microsoft to the state that it's currently in to this very day. And the PS4 Pro, yeah, good. They learned their lesson. It came out three years later, and it was cheaper in retrospect what it used to be and the ps5 the reason that even if you could buy it a lot of people weren't in 2020 is because it was so damn expensive it was 600 bills when it was released and now to come out and say that it's a steal and try to cope that it's 700 dollars don't worry guys it's gonna be fine but yeah and uh, shout out to night sky prince one of the best final fantasy creators by the way full stop wholesale yeah, nice, nice. Now let's uh, get, now let's see people's wages in regards to that inflation. Yeah, exactly. Don't want to play that game now, do ya? They're Sony bootlicker. Of course not. But bro, this is a, this is a massive failure. I haven't seen, like outside of just the pure Sony pony console bros, nobody's excited about this. Nobody's thinking that, wow, this is going to be a great deal. This is going to be the shot in the arm that Sony needs coming off of the collapse that was Concord. Oh, it's really going to build on the momentum of Astro Bot that everybody's going to forget about in about a month's time. I'm not saying anything bad about the game. It's just, a, it's a little platformer that was never supposed to be anything more than just a supplement or a supplementary title for a studio. I'm glad that it's successful. I see that a lot of people love playing it. Just let's not pretend that this is console mover. Nobody's buying a PS5, let alone a PS5 Pro. Nobody's slapping down $700 to play a $40 game. This is ridiculous. As the current console generation reached the middle of its lifespan, which is wild to think about, Sony has officially unveiled a more streamlined model, which, yeah, it looks exactly like the PS5 Slim that was, what, just announced and just released last holiday season? Like, is, is that what we're doing? Oh, but it's got racing stripes on it, so that means it's cool, I guess. And sadly, it does, uh, yeah, offer slight improvements in processing power. It's such an inconsequential upgrade. Like, at least the PS4 Pro, it was offering a considerable upgrade upgrade the games were actually running at 60 fps for the first time ever you were offered the option for a performance or for a graphics mode this time around it's eh, it's 28 percent faster faster than what yeah earlier this week the rumor mill began to swell when a supposed news of an advanced iteration of the now four-year-old playstation 5 would soon be revealed to the public and ultimately these rumors turned out to be true as the recent ps5 technical presentation hosted by mark cerny uh, the embattled video game company confirmed a new model of its said console the ps5 pro was soon headed to store shelves less than 10 minutes in total length and far from technical yep just a whole bunch of corporate buzzwords that everybody was just left going Okay, well, if you're going to be going all digital and you have the opportunity to buy a disk drive for an additional $80, so here you go, a $780 console, if you're so inclined to get all the bells and whistles and whatever the price of the stand is, so you're going to have to drop $800 for a nominal upgrade. Dude, this is, this is PS3 energy all over again. 
Now, in fact, more credence was given to the original PS5 tech specs, uh, which Cerny used as a springboard to discuss grievances game developers had with the first iteration of the console. Yeah, it was a broke-ass PC. I remember, I was around during those times. Everybody was laughing at how pathetic this next-gen console was. According to Cerny, developers wanted more graphical power. Yeah, exactly, because consoles, for a very long time, have been holding back the advancement of the video game industry. Sucks to suck if you're one of these console purists, but that's just been the fact for a very, very long time. As opposed to being forced to split their development attentions, yeah, between the console's performance and graphics mode, and the former ensuring that the given, yeah, the game can run at 60 FPS and later capping it at 30 FPS. I can't believe that we're still at a point in time now where we're having to worry about a, th a game coming out in the 24th and moving into the 25th year of the 21st century and we're dealing with 30 FPS. What are we doing? Thanks, consoles. Yeah, in light of both uh, this feedback and the reality that three quarters of the time PS5 players choose uh, to use its performance mode over its graphics mode. Yeah, uh, on Rebirth, you can't play an action game. It is something that is so built around fast-paced decision-making. I can't play it at 30 FPS. Literally, my head hurts, okay? Uh, the Sony executive explained removing that decision and at least narrowing that divide is one key target for the PlayStation 5 Pro. So not even saying that they're going to do that. It's just simply a key target because we have no idea what the specs are. And there's no way that it could be competitive with a high-end PC, something that's going to be cranking out ultra settings. Like, that's just not possible, even at that super inflated price point. Yeah, look, the Sony the Spooderman 2 is going to look better, I guess take your word for it game that's very likely to get a pc port here in the next year or two but a console without a disc drive is basically an entry-level pc and at 700 dollars, you're not opening the door for anybody all you're doing is hastening the decline of the console market and at this point in time the year of the bust it's so funny because recently in a video i think it was the ubisoft on death's door video I was, uh, yeah, I wrote that 2024 was the year of the AAA space imploding. And this right here, yeah, this is just simply the bow on top of the gift that keeps on giving that is 2024 and has simply ossified my prediction. This is going to be a year of monumental change that is going to have ripple effects for the rest of this console generation and whatever the next one is going to look like. At this point in time, don't know if we get to a 10th generation because right now we are languishing in the 9th and minuscule iterations, minuscule improvements like this doesn't inspire anybody's faith in an already failing industry. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.